Let's talk about camera shots and angles. Instead of shots, I like to use the word framing, um, composition, okay? Well, composition is the whole thing, okay? But this, I will change it for framing instead. Um, because it makes more sense when I talk about what actually framing is. So let's see with my mouse in here. And all right, this is, this is the many types of, uh, of camera compositions that we can find. Long shot, medium, close up, extreme close up, high angle, low angle, over the shoulder, uh, point of view, pen, tilt, aerial uh, framing shot, and tracking shot, okay? Long shot, let's go very quickly. Those are very, very easy to understand what all those are. So I'm gonna actually put this guy right here, okay? That is a long shot. Um, the only thing that bothers me on this picture, maybe it bothers you as well, what could it be that is not complete on this image? Can someone actually observe the picture from top to bottom, side to side, and tell me what is that you see that is incorrect? The headroom, yes, it still quite makes sense, but that is something more than that. So now let's move to a medium shot, a medium framing. The medium framing will be all the way from my, from my waist in here to the top of the head. And, and um, always keep in mind, making sure that you have the enough, the enough headroom. Okay, don't compromise the, the subject's head at this point, cutting, you know, metaphorically speaking, the hair on the head. So it's one of the most common shots to use, and there are several different variations of it. A typical medium shot is often either framed from knees, knees or waist, or from the subject. Okay, that would be a medium. As a, for me, will work either one, but this is a medium shot. So now, let's go in. All right, this is a close-up. That's simple to understand, right? A close-up is we're going to go uh, straight to practically from here all the way to here and making sure that we don't actually cut anything off on the top at this point. Uh, do we have a safe headroom? Yes or no? Questionable, isn't it? As for me, it's not safe. As you can see, if you observe well, the angle of his head is looking down. Okay? So in the moment that he actually raised his face, what's going to happen? It's going to cut his hair. So we need to always, this is part of the framing. Very important, the headroom needs to be very carefully taken care of. And we need to be, make sure that we have the enough headroom. So we see the, uh, the subject's face close enough on the frame. So now let's go to a let's go to an extreme close up. And that's easy to understand. Very self-explanatory. Square into a part of the body. In this case it was his eye. That is very uh, um, um, extreme close, making sure that we hit the detail on that subject. 
And this is a high angle uh, frame. Okay? Camera is going to be very high facing down. Okay? The high angle is when the camera is raised above the subject and is tilted down at the subject. It's often used to make the subject in the, in the shot look smaller, weaker, or more vulnerable. So if I, if I am a, a person and I want to look weak, all what I have to do is look up, have a camera right here, up here, angle down, and I will look so weak and small comparing to anything else. And that is, that is the motion that we see in many, in many movies uh, that that particular shot, it looks like weaker and smaller and vulnerable. And now it comes the low angle. This is the opposite, okay? On a low angle, of course, this guy looked like a giant to me. And it's very powerful and, and it's threatening. Uh, so I need, to just, I need to just be careful with this guy because he's very big, according to the camera angle, right? Otherwise, it's a normal, probably 5.6 uh, feet, this guy. But the camera was actually set right here, up, and it gave me that, that uh, look of being taller and more threatening and stronger or powerful. That is that angle right there. Love angle. And let's keep going here. Over the shoulder. This one is super cool. I like this particular uh, framing in here. Especially, uh, it, this one is done when we have an interview. Okay, we can include when two people are in the, in the same scene on it, this one can be as uh, this asking the questions to this guy and over the shoulder camera. That is, is given as a uh, interacting with one person to another. In this case, the one behind the camera is the one with the camera over the shoulder uh, frame. Uh, now we have a panning. Panning is left. Panning right. That is the motion of now. Not necessarily we actually have a, a um, let's say a mid shot. Okay? Because this guy is from the knees all the way to his head. But not necessarily that, but we adding motion to that particular framing. Okay? We are following the guy. We are following this particular uh, uh, person, okay? A, punch, a panning shot is when the camera is locked on a fixed point but follows a subject horizontally. It is used to either follow the subject or switch subjects in the frame. It helps the audience. Okay, uh, something important is on this particular uh, image is that if you see, we have more room right here, right? And this is, this is, this right here, here is called nose room. I know, nose room or a, uh, a front space room. Mostly they use nose room. And the reason is because I'm walking here and, and someone is following with the camera. If I am, if I am this much of to my right, it will be the less margin for the camera operator to just lose me and me being out of the frame. I want to follow a few examples in a minute. But that is a panning, and, and this, on this particular shot, I believe it's panning to the left. And tilt. Tilt is tilt down, tilt up. Okay, on the tripod is a tripod motion, down and up. The previous one, panning, left or right, is, another, is a tripod motion at this point. Uh, 
aerial, aerial shot. Obviously, uh, that one could be done uh, only with a drawn view, okay? Uh, there is not I can have an aerial shot because if I have a camera tied to a tripod, like the one we have in the studio, looking down, that is still a high angle shot at this point, not an aerial. An aerial is because the camera is completely off the ground, like a drone. Tracking shot. All right, tracking is only done when we have the camera in a dolly with wheels. We want to track forward. We want to track backwards. We want to track left. Or we want to track right. That is, that is, that motion is a tripod motion. It will help when we just want to follow a subject that is either we can follow from behind, from the front, uh, and we pull backwards, and, or we can just actually track left and follow the subject walking by. Okay? So that is a tracking mode, and a shot is with motion. Uh, keep in mind that I'm going to ask you what all the tripod motions are. Okay? Uh, uh, tripod motions are panning, tilt, and tracking is this one here. Okay? Tripod motions, one more time, is uh, panning, tilting, or tracking. Let's see what it's called. Conclusion. And a conclusion. Okay, this is practically like wraps all, all the camera angles and camera framing, tripod motion that we have uh, to our availability, or perhaps what is the type of video that you are doing is how you're going to actually uh, include any of this video uh, camera angles or of motion on your tripod, okay? So keep in mind that anything that the, uh, the you are shooting a video, recording, very important that you need to add motion, okay? You need to add motion, otherwise will be will be quite bored. Or perhaps you can do that as a multi-takes and it will make your video look more interesting to watch if you have multi-angles on your video itself. Even if you do a, 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 an interview, for example, you can have multi-takes on the same person, uh, interview in or interview ear, and it will make more attractive, more creative. Otherwise, click or tap and it's gone, okay? So, now, let's be creative. 